Today, we want to thank you for joining us here at Binghamton University to discuss undergraduate research opportunities. Um, first of all, I want to definitely extend, um, you know, hoping that everyone is safe out there. I know things are trying, things are tough for um, family members, whether it's local or you have family all over the place. Um, so definitely, I hope everyone's staying safe, healthy, and kind of just, you know, taking a breather. And this is something that can help you to kind of get your mind off it, at least for an hour and focus on other things. For those admitted students, um, congratulations. For those students who are prospects, still thinking about Binghamton, we welcome all of you. Um, before we get started, I want everyone that's on the panel to kind of give a quick uh, introduction. I'm gonna tell you who I am, um, and then we'll go through the rest of the panel and let you know everyone that's here. Uh, my name is Byron Gittins. I am part of the senior staff with the admissions office here at Binghamton University. I am regionally based in Connecticut, and I'm from Queens, New York. Michaela? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michaela Ridley. I use she and her pronouns. I am one of our admissions counselors here. Uh, I work with students kind of all over the country. Some of my biggest territories are Ohio, the greater Washington, D.C. area, and my own home state of Washington. Craig? Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Craig Broccoli, the Associate Director of Admissions, but I'm actually based in New York City for Binghamton. Uh, prior to that, I did study at Binghamton as an undergrad in mechanical engineering and, and business for grad school, with particular focus in sustainable design. I'll be on the back end answering questions today. Okay, Valerie. Hi, I'm Valerie and Bruce. I'm the Director of the External Scholarships and Undergraduate Research Center. I am also a Binghamton alumna. I was an environmental studies major um, and am so thrilled to be back at the university in this capacity. Lisa? Hi, I'm Lisa Theo. I'm a research and scholarship advisor in the Undergraduate Research Center. I'm fairly new to Binghamton University. About a year and a half ago, I moved here from the University of Wisconsin system. I used to be a geography professor. I also teach in an environmental studies um, program here on campus. Welcome. See, we didn't know we had another former Big Ten person on here. I was with Maryland prior to Binghamton. Ben? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Ben Winchell. I'm a senior from Staten Island, New York. I study integrative neuroscience and I'm on the pre-health track. Um, and I was in a freshman research immersion for research at Binghamton University. Kelly? Hi everyone, my name is Kelly. I'm currently a junior double majoring in environmental studies and geography. Um, I'm a tour guide at Binghamton and I was part of the fresh, freshman research immersion program. I was actually accepted into that my sophomore year. Um, I've also continued that research um, as an independent study. And then I was part of the summer scholars and artists program last summer. Hannah. Hi everyone, I'm Hannah. I'm a sophomore from Manhattan, double majoring in psychology and politics, philosophy, and law with a minor in human rights. And um, my freshman year, I was involved in the source project, specifically the human rights stream of the source project. Melina. Hi everybody, my name is Melina Brunelli. I am a sophomore biochemistry major from Rochester, New York. I do biochemical and molecular genetics re research as an independent study, and I am the senior student ambassador for the External Scholarships and Undergraduate Research Center. Thank you. Thanks so much for putting this together. And for all of you who are able to attend, I see there's over 90 attendees. That's fantastic. There's so much interest in research at the undergraduate level. I think Honestly, this is a real benefit of us being virtual right now is that we have such a high participation rate. So it's one of the kind of unanticipated, I think, positive benefits of, of our new kind of world of connecting this way through Zoom. Um, so we, I will just forefront this by saying at Binghamton University, you know, we're a research one university, which means we have the highest level of research activity um, is classified within the higher educational system at large in the U.S. And this is something that Binghamton has just recently obtained. We've been working really hard. I joined the university five years ago as we came off of a growth plan and hiring 30% more faculty, the students, uh, student body growing. Um, and our research infrastructure is just tremendous here. Our research libraries, um, the labs and facilities we have across all disciplines um, for art, for creative work, for drama. 
and we think about research really, really broadly in my office. And so you'll see many of our students here um, represented are doing fantastic things in the sciences. Um, but science is, is kind of one manifestation of research. Right? We also uh, have been working really hard to have opportunities in social sciences and humanities. Um, and the arts really thrive. All of these areas thrive in, in Binghamton. And so no matter what your interests, um, there's some opportunity and way that you can plug in. And my office, the Undergraduate Research Center and External Scholarships um, Office, really what we do is help guide students in finding opportunities. So we do advising. Um, and I encourage you all to look at our website, you know, pull it up right now as you're sitting at your computer. Uh, so we really have it nicely outlined, the sort of things that we do um, from one-on-one -on -one advising to, you know, sit down, you know, tell me what you're interested in, tell me what, um, what kinds of things you've done and where you might be going. Um, and students at all levels from their first year up until their very last year and, and even alumni too we work with um, will help kind of guide you to the opportunities you're looking for, whether that's on campus um, or off campus, right? We help students find and contact faculty who might be doing projects they want um, on campus. And as they're getting more experience, then we guide them to programs um, off campus. Um, research is, is seen, um, it, it's sort of seen in many ways. I mean, one, and I think why I got in, you know, why I got involved as an undergraduate was just, you know, the curiosity, the kind of things, the kinds of questions you can ask and, and independent learning that you can do as an undergraduate um, by asking questions. You know, when I was an environmental studies major, I, I just, I love doing field work. Like I loved being out in, in the forest, wetlands, you know, birds, plants, trees, all of it. Um, agricultural settings, we went to farms all the time. It was fantastic. And then as a, as a senior, I was presented with an opportunity to go to a cloud forest preserve in Ecuador and study tropical botany. And it was my first, I had studied tropical ecology in the classroom. It's my first time being in that ecosystem. It's the first time I was doing work that I, I was self-directing. Like I was literally mailed exams. I mean, this was back, so this tells you this was the 90s. You know, we had just started using email, right? So I was literally mailed exams. And, and, that, and that style of learning really worked for me. That's where it took off for me, having that independence being kind of in the driver's seat of what I was doing with guidance. Um, so it's really key when we talk about undergraduate research, everything you do is, is guided, it's, it's mentor guided. Um, so we play that role, right, of, of finding the mentors for you. And sometimes that's informally, you know, through the grapevine, building your network, introducing you to people, all the students that you see here, the, the tour guides and the ambassadors that we have, they're great students, help one another. Everyone is really collaborative um, and really works in the best interest of helping each other at Binghamton. I can truly say that of, of many of the institutions I've been at, I think we really have a, a spirit of helping to lift one another up. And so that's part of our, our ethos. And so we can help you do that, like through our one-on-one -on -one advising and um, connecting you with others. And then, you know, once you get your foot in the door and you start working on a project, we, we've set up you know, the full research ecosystem. I like to think about it as I make that analogy from my, my um, scientific background. But we have um, all of the parts that you need to be a successful researcher. You know, we have that set up for you. And part of that's funding. You know, research doesn't just happen in a vacuum. Well, there's many times a sponsor. You know, if you're a professional researcher, you're learning how to ask your sponsors for money. Who are your sponsors, right? Who are the people who are going to pay for the equipment, the field trips, the travel that you need? Um, and so we have funds for students. We have um, a research award and we have a conference travel award where we will give you money. We'll just, you apply to us, you write an application, you learn how to how to talk about your work in written form. And, um, and we'll give you, you know, from a few hundred dollars up to a thousand dollars for a research project. Um, we give those awards every fall and every spring. Uh, we also have a signature summer program, Summer Scholars and Artists. So um, Kelly was a part of that. She's, uh, she's here. And um, 
and summer scholars and artists, we will fund independent projects that you might do. And this, you can apply after your first year, after your second year, after your third year at Binghamton. Um, you'll earn a stipend of $3,500. Um, your mentor will, will earn a stipend and you'll work for eight weeks on your research in the summer and uh, and you can solely focus on that. We, we have, you know, kind of meetings in between that help you with you know, professional networking or how to present your work, how to talk about your work. We focus a lot on communication skills. Um, we set up, um, we set up presentations for you and everyone gives a formal presentation. Um, and so it's really great. And um, often our summer scholars go on to do um, all kinds of really interesting things from, you know, going to fully funded graduate programs or applying to um, prestigious awards um, through the National Science Foundation or, you know, publishing a children's book. Um, we had a student who worked in an amphibian lab who, who decided he wanted to write about amphibians for, you know, elementary school kids and, and did that. We had another proposal in that way is now looking at how do you talk about beneficial bacteria to elementary school kids. And so we support those kinds of projects as well. Um, you know, to give you a sense of, I think one of the summer scholars last year, we had uh, some of our students go international, they'll take that money and, and go and do field work in another country. We had a student, Emily Jalen, who was studying um, architecture and went to visit, visit Jewish um, synagogues to look at the Moorish influence on, in, uh, on synagogue architecture in Eastern Europe. She went to a few different sites. Um, we had another student, uh, Peter Farquharson, who went to um, Argentina and looked at street art and what street art says about politics and social movements. Um, so it gives you a sense of what some other kinds of projects are. We have students who write and self-publish their work um, or students who um, act and will take acting classes over the summer with their stipends and then put on a one-person performance, you know, and record that and upload it to our journal. Um, so moving on in the research ecosystem, right, once students, you know, get the money they need to do their project, have the space and time to do it through something like Summer Scholars or, or maybe working, um, working in a, in a lab or on their project um, through independent study or just additional to their coursework, um, then we encourage, right, which we see as kind of the final mark of doing research is, is sharing it, is putting it back out there in the world. And, you know, I work with first year students in the Source Project and our first year students can develop a project and ask a novel question and find answers and have something meaningful to say about a topic that no one else has given thought to and share that. We just had amazing presentations on this past week on Friday um, from our research days session. So research days is something we organize every year and it's a, we have a signature poster session where students, you know, like a professional conference, put up a poster and talk about their work. The process of laying out a poster, deciding how to represent your project, that's an incredible eff effort at, at analyzing information, visualizing information. Um, that's often where I see students making connections about the work that they've done is through that process of putting a poster together and then talking about it. And then people come, like we had these presentations, so my students um, were studying the place of Binghamton and they went out and they interviewed school principals and superintendents and talked with local politicians and met with museum curators just to explore all these different facets of life in Binghamton. And um, when they were presenting at the poster session, they were professors and other staff um, and other students who were like, oh my God, you know, we, that information could be valuable in my class next semester. I'd love to hear more. Um, and so that's, that's what we want to see. We want to see the work that students do. We know our students can do um, if you give them, if we give them the chance, like we, we provide these opportunities through research. They have something to contribute and um, presenting or writing about your research and publishing it in our undergraduate journal. It's another venue that we have that you should definitely check out when you go to the office website, you'll see the undergraduate journal, Alpenglow, and it's an online journal. Um, you can see students work there. You can listen to their music, musical compositions. You can see their, their 
their theatrical performances. You can read their research papers. Um, and these are all things that we, we see and we know our students can do. They have something to say. And so we're providing the platforms for students to say it, right, and be heard and to contribute to our knowledge generation that, that moves us, you know, forward as a, as a society. So that's, that's in a nutshell um, what we do. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, uh, so, to some of our students now. You can hear firsthand about their particular projects. I'm sure you want to hear more details about all the great work that, that goes on at Binghamton. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Valerie. And uh, before I share my screen and move on to that student work, I do just have one question uh, for you, Valerie, maybe to help put some students at ease that may be looking to come to your office in you know, their freshman year. When they hear that word research and they're a little nervous about it or they don't think they can do research, I know you had you know, said you, did, you had a little bit of a science background, mm -hmm. but for that person who really wants to get involved in it, especially like at a research one institution such as Binghamton, what kind of ease can you give them to say, you know, it will be okay and we will help you through the process. You don't have to come in here knowing. Yeah, I mean, research can be a great way to explore what you're interested in. And that's where, you know, you're, you're an undergraduate. We meet students at whatever level they are. And as experienced educators, as we all are in the office, I've taught, um, Lisa has taught, um, and our students who work with us, we have grad students who work with us who teach. Um, and, and I would say the, fa you know, the faculty that we, we network with, um, we're all educators and understand that you, you need to, I mean, teaching and learning happens at the level at which you are. There's no, there's no one level that's better than another level. There's no one set of knowledge that's better than another set of knowledge. Um, and so it's just a matter of kind of finding out where you are. And some of that on your end is just being honest with yourself. Where are you? And communicating that so that we could fully understand and be like, okay, you've never, never done research before. You're not sure what it is. Let's talk about what it could look like for you and how it matches with, you know, some of the things that really make you excited. Okay, and one last question for you, Valerie, and I promise we're going to move on to the students. Mm -hmm. um, just the environment, would you say it's more collaborative? Because, you know, some students are extremely competitive, especially mm -hmm. talking about honors programs um, and different projects they may be doing. What's the environment for that person who may be just starting out and they are not that person who took all the science courses in high school and IB and AP or were in the honor roll? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say we're all, you know, especially in my office, we're, we're all collaborative. We're all there to help, um, to help you um, meet your, you know, kind of find your dreams, define them and, and help make them happen. Um, I, I can say, you know, generally, so that's in like the spirit of helping one another. I mean, really, um, research even in a professional world, and I would say, um, at the undergraduate level too, is becoming more and more collaborative in that people actually have to work together because, you know, many skills and many topics, especially within the sciences, have become so specialized that expertise is so narrow that in order to answer, you know, complex questions like climate change or the human microbiome, right, or genomics, like you need people working together on these things. And so teamwork and collaboration is really important in research. And we, we see that a lot just through in research days or poster presentations, um, we see more and more projects being group projects. You know, we see more and more student teams working together and that's mirroring what's happening in the research world in general. Okay, well, thank you. And now we're gonna move on to our students. Um, for the attendees, these are our students, so they're usually not filtered. So you're gonna hear live from them what they have to say. So we're gonna share my screen and Ben, you're gonna be up first, okay? Uh, so. I guess uh, my history with the research uh, started the spring slash summer before my freshman year of college. Um, during that time, I don't remember exactly, it might have been around the April, May area, I was invited to participate in the freshman research immersion program. Um, I came into college knowing that I wanted to do pre-health, uh, specifically pre-med, and I knew that for that journey, uh, research is something that I probably should do uh, while at college, just put that on my resume, but it wasn't something that I knew if I truly wanted to do. Um, but when I got invited into freshman research immersion, it was actually one of the 
things that helped me decide on Binghamton as opposed to the other schools that I was considering because uh, I thought it was just a great opportunity. Uh, so I got placed into the neuroscience stream, uh, which means that for my three semesters in freshman research, uh, I would be working under the global uh, sphere of neuroscience. Um, so uh, my freshman year, my first semester, we learned how to do uh, pro we learned how to do secondary research. So what that me meant was, is that we were assigned a topic. Uh, so specifically, uh, ours was how um, do, uh, do different types of depressions, including bipolar depression and postpartum depression, how is that affected by exercise? Um, and we created over our first semester a poster that looked similar to this. It wasn't this one. Um, but something similar, and then we learned how to write about it, and then later present it at a poster symposium. Then my second semester, we worked under my professor, Dr. Corinne Kiesling, uh, and we did a project under, again, the branch of the umbrella of neuroscience, uh, something that she helped lead. So for us, it was sex differences in Parkinsonian rats. So our big topic for my last two semesters was Parkinson's disease, uh, which is something that's really rampant and growing in the community as we're getting, on average, older as a population. Uh, so a big part in Parkinson's research um, is what subjects do we use? And we wanted to see if there are um, obvious sex differences between males and females and how they present with Parkinson's disease, uh, because based on that information, it, m it makes we can make more well-informed decisions when picking subjects for testing and research and those sorts of things. Uh, during that semester, I learned how to write a scientific paper um, and as well as write a grant for the third semester in which me, a group of me and my peers, about five of us, uh, would work on our own unique project, again, under Parkinson's disease. And that's what, uh, what you're looking at currently is the result of that grant and that project my third semester. Uh, so from doing a dive into the uh, literature, we saw that potentially the drug that's most commonly used to treat Parkinson's disease, which is L-DOPA, uh, it might actually cause anxiety uh, in patients, which of course is not a good thing. Um, so what we did is we took uh, results from different tests we did with the rats, and then we compared that to the different levels of neurotransmitters that they had in their brains, uh, the neurotransmitters, norepinephrine and serotonin, ones that are commonly uh, analyzed uh, to look at anxiety levels. And then we tried to see if there were any correlations between them to see if the effect, uh, and we again, we did this in rats that had taken the drug as well as not taken the drug to see if anxiety would be produced from taking the drug. Um, overall, I think that it was an incredible experience. I didn't know what to expect when I came in my freshman year, uh, but I was, I, it always put me ahead in all of my classes because I always knew a little bit about what was going on. Um, I think it did wonders for me learning how to do project management, team management, things like that. Some of my best friends still are the people that I worked with so closely these first three semesters. Uh, throughout my three semesters in freshman research, I was offered a ton of different opportunities to network and get to know different professors uh, to continue on with research. Specifically, I wasn't able to do it just because of the other things I had on my plate during college and my later years, but I have tons of friends through the same opportunities who were able to join labs afterwards and continue on with their research. Is there anything else that uh, you think I should add? No, Ben, I think that was perfect. Thank you. I do have one Thank question you. for you. Sure, absolutely. Any specific um, professors or um, collaborators that you worked with on this that you really, um, I guess, mesmerized by? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean, it's funny. I, I have to say all of them. I was able to meet um, a ton of really cool people, but I would say probably cool. So I worked under Dr. Corinne Kiesling, who sadly she uh, went to teach at a different school. Uh, but the person that she uh, did research under when she was a PhD student uh, was Dr. Christopher Bishop. Uh, and actually, I was able to speak to him just personally in his office multiple times. And I was planning on joining his lab after my freshman, uh, after my sophomore year, which is a way that people continue on with research afterwards. Uh, sadly, just my schedule didn't allow for it. But um, so he is one of the heads of the neuroscience department and just the fact that I was able to, as a student, just email him and say, I'm very interested in what you do as research. I read a few of your papers. Can I come in and chat about what you do? Um, and the fact that it could be something as colloquial as that and I was able to reach and speak to um, a head of a department I thought was really, really cool. And he does incredible work. Thank you for sharing that because I think it's important sometimes with students. Um, you know, there's a lot of big research institutions out there, but being able to access professors like that and not have to be dealing with, you know, a school that maybe has 
35, 40,000 kids, I think that's a great thing to mention. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, no go ahead, Ben. I, I was just going to say, yeah. I mean, also, I have been just like experience as a tour guide. Um, when I always push research on my tours, and I love to say that there are so many ways to get into research. And depending on what your comfortability is, level is, there the undergraduate research office is an incredible way to get into it. Things like the Source Project FRI are also, every person I know that's taken a part of them have absolutely loved those experiences. But again, it can also be just something as simple as emailing a professor who, I know friends who have gotten into labs by just emailing a professor and saying, I'm really interested in what you do, can we speak? So I think Absolutely. That's great. Thank you so much for that. No problem. Uh, Kelly, you're going to be up next here. Awesome. Yeah, so I kind of want to start talking about how I kind of fell into research at Binghamton. In high school, I did, I was very active in research. My school had a lab, so we made projects and kind of entered them into science competitions. But I always had this perception that if I did research in college, if I majored in some kind of STEM major, then the only career for me after college would be to work in a lab wearing a white lab coat and just kind of doing experiments all day long. And I knew that that wasn't something I really wanted. So I was not invited to FRI when I came into college my freshman year. I came in undecided, I had no major. Um, but through my freshman year, I kind of always wished that I still had research. It was a big part of my life in high school. So when I declared my majors, I'm environmental studies and geography. So when I declared that at the end of my freshman year, I was actually invited into one of the streams, environmental visualization, starting in my sophomore year. And that had a huge impact on me because it showed me that everything I thought about research wasn't 100% true. So in that stream, I actually flew drones. I worked on computers using geographical information systems and learned about a whole different field of science that I never really knew existed. And the way that that kind of influenced my life was really incredible. Um, so I worked on that project. My project focused on using uh, hyperspectral sensing, which is like a type of drone, a type of remote sensing to detect harmful algal blooms. And that was something I studied in high school, but now in college, it kind of reframed everything I like knew about that. So you can see my background here is the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, my research actually took me all the way to San Francisco. So I worked last summer in the Summer Scholars and Artists Program, um, kind of perfecting, narrowing down my, my research, um, getting to know the methods that I would be using in my third semester, which is when we kind of did our actual independent study, which focused on using geographical information systems to basically process data that I got from NASA. It's kind of, it's publicly available. So it was really cool to be able to use what's already available out there to kind of show the world in, through different images and using like computer systems to do that. And so I applied to go to the American Geophysical Union's conference and present my research. You can see that's the picture on the left. And that was last December and it took place in San Francisco. So I got funding from the Undergraduate Research Center and also through Harper's Edge, which is another office that will fund different projects. And so that trip was fully funded and it really opened my eyes to everything that research can be. There were thousands of people there, so it was really a great experience. Um, and I highly recommend anybody who's interested in research to look into going to different conferences, meeting different people. It's really a great way to see what else is out there. And then even at Binghamton, they support research so much. So what I, the process that I use was geographical information systems and the geography department has their own kind of GIS day, which is like a poster session that has like awards at the, at the end of it. And so I actually won first place in that last semester. And I never really thought that my research could win first place in anything. So that kind of showed me that the research that I'm doing here in the FRI program really is meaningful and really is worth something. And my professor, his name is Tim, uh, he really pushed me to like do more, uh, go further into the research, look at everything from different perspectives. And that kind of helped me also determine that research is something I really wanna do in my undergraduate career and something that I can see myself doing after college as well. Thank you for sharing that and also mentioning the professor. So, you know, I usually like to get that in there too. Um, so very good, thank you. And I guess um, last thing I would ask Kelly is uh, research 
it, you don't have to just do um, education abroad and study abroad. People who are doing research can study abroad as well. And in most cases, they do, it looks like. Yeah, well, I didn't study abroad. Um, my, I just went to a conference that took place in San Francisco. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, it looks like you are up next, Melina. Okay, I'll actually unmute myself this time. So hi again. I want to talk about how I became involved in research and how that led me to different projects and my work with the external scholarships and undergraduate research center. So I first became involved with research the summer before I came to Binghamton as a freshman. I was granted an internship at Cornell doing research for one of the plant pathology PhD candidates and I absolutely loved the research that I did the problem solving, the presenting, the whole gambit. Um, I was actually admitted to, admitted to Binghamton through the Decker School of Nursing because I was 99% sure that I wanted to become a nurse, but that got completely turned around. My first week of college, I visited the External Scholarships and Undergraduate Research Center, wanting to find a faculty member that did research similar to what I did with Cornell. And Valerie and Bruce actually helped me get in contact with Dr. Kirsten Bright. Dr. Kirsten Pryor, who is an ecology professor here, and I was a mem member of that lab by week three of my freshman year. And I enjoyed the work that I did so much with Cornell and with Dr. Pryor that I decided that nursing was not for me and that I wanted to go to graduate school and do my own novel research. So by the spring semester of my freshman year, I switched my major to biochemistry and I have not looked back. And because of my experience and with a lot of help from the Undergraduate Research Center, I've worked at Michigan State University. You can see the poster that I completed here. Um, I did more work at Cornell. I started working with Dr. Musselman. That's the poster from Cornell. And a, I started working with Dr. Musselman here, who is a biochemistry professor. And I'm working on a project that really interests me and encompasses a lot of things that I want to work with at graduate school. From my Cornell projects, I have two publications. And from all of my projects, as you can see here, my poster presentations at different conferences. Um, and I was also nominated for the prestigious Goldwater Scholarship that I applied for this uh, past spring semester. I also helped Lisa Theo start the Student Ambassador Program in the External Scholarship and Undergraduate Research Center where the ambassadors table, offer advice, and give presentations to students on how to get involved in undergraduate research. And because I really like my job and I love helping students realize the potential for academic and personal growth and doing research, I graduated to the Senior Student Ambassador. So if you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, and if I could offer one piece of advice to the incoming freshmen, it would really be to try to get involved with research here. Binghamton is, has so many opportunities and it offers you the chance to contribute to the field of work that you're in. It's of course a great resume booster and fosters, in my opinion, a huge opportunity for academic and personal growth. Thank you, Melina. Any uh, favorite professors or faculty or? I mean, so yeah. I have worked with Dr. Kirsten Pryor and Dr. Laura Musselman. They are both fantastic mentors. Um, they have wonderful graduate students as well. If you're interested in either ecology or biochemistry slash molecular genetics research, I would consider those two professors. Very good. Thank you so much. Brittany. Hi, so I'm Brittany um, and I'm a junior biochemistry major. Um, so when I came into college, I knew I wanted to do research as a career. I knew I wanted to do specifically drug development research and go to get my PhD in medicinal chem once I finished my undergrad. Um, so when I was accepted to the FRI program, I joined the biogeochemistry stream, which wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but after that opportunity, after I finished FRI, um, I left with a lot of like basic um, research skills that could be applied to any field, not just 
um, the biogeochemistry field. So from that, I went and I joined my current lab, which is in the pharmacy building. So a big thing for joining the lab, um, some people like were, are scared and they don't know how, but it's honestly pretty simple. Um, a lot of clubs have mixers. For me personally, I met my professor through a mixer that the FRI program threw. Um, and I met him and I talked with him about his research. Um, and then closer to the next semester, I emailed him and I was like, I'm really interested in your research. Can we sit down and can we talk? Um, and we just had sort of an informal interview. Um, and that's how most of the research um, opportunities begin if it's not through a program in FRI is just as simple as sending an email and asking to talk to them. Um, so I started that um, research um, in January of 2019. Um, and then that summer, so last summer, I was part of the Som Summer Scholars and Artists Program, um, which as Valerie mentioned earlier, you get to stay over the summer and focus full time on your research. Um, so from that, um, I made this poster both for research days and as well as the American Chemical, Chemical Society um, like national conference and the research center is also really great for giving funding for your presentations. So I received funding to attend the uh, national conference, which really makes it accessible to go and have these opportunities as an undergrad. And you don't really have to worry like, well, I can't get that experience that would look great on my resume, like look great for my career because I can't afford it. So the research center is really good for making sure that opportunity is accessible if you want it to. Um, and additionally, the work that I worked on during the Summer Scholars Program, um, a few weeks ago, I just got published into my first paper. So that's really great. Um, and hopefully I will have more through that, uh, more publications through that and continue the research that I started through my senior year. Yeah, congratulations with that, Brittany, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> okay, folks, so. We're all back here. Um, Craig and Michaela have been busy with us on chat, but before we get right to them, I just wanted to kind of ask, um, you know, Miguel, anything you want to add about just um, your experience at Binghamton and, and what you see happening in the future um, in, in regards to research? Uh. Well, in Binghamton, there is obviously, as everybody's been saying, there's a lot of research opportunities. And of course, myself, I'm still trying to get into one of those. Um, it's really, obviously, a really great opportunity, and it's available for pretty much any field, and everybody should be able to go into it. I do have some research experience from before being in Binghamton. Um, and yeah. No, nope, very good. Well, you remember <laughs> Valerie said, it's not a necessity. We're starting with all t types of different people where they are in the timeline of research. So it's good to get your perspective because we may be having someone on here that's a junior in high school thinking about it and has no clue. But we all see what the outcome can be based on some of the things and the works that we've been seeing. Um, Hyatt, do you have anything to add? Um. For me personally, the way I was able to get into research was I was a freshman spring admit and the summer prior to that I attended like a research program at SUNY Purchase and that's where I first like got exposed to research. So once I came here I knew like it was something that I wanted to continue to pursue. So I decided to go online and looked up the different departments of the school and um, under the departments it had the, each faculty. So I went under the biochemistry department and I found um, the faculty um, advisor who I currently do research with, um, Dr. Callahan. And that's where I was able to email him and say, hey, I'm really interested in your research after I was able to read upon it. And he told me to come in for an interview. And once I had the interview, we just talked a little and then he said that he wanted me to be in his lab. And then I was able to meet the graduate students un in his lab and they were able to help me acquire more skills for research as well so that was just my experience. very good thank you for sharing that Hyatt and and I'm glad you brought that up because um 
from the admission standpoint, we have all sorts of students coming in different ways, folks. Um, some folks are getting fall admits. Some folks are coming here as spring admits. Some folks are on a wait list. Some folks are transfer students. So there's a journey for everyone. And especially if you're looking at undergraduate research opportunities, um, they're coming from all walks of life. So that's the reason of, for me opening this up so you can see that. Um, and Hannah. Hi, I would just like to add that if you're not super interested in hard sciences, research is still a really open thing for you to do. For me personally, I was not involved in any hard sciences. That's not my thing. And I kind of discounted research in college until I was invited to the source project. And that's kind of how I got exposed to non-scientific, more humanities-based research. And I think it's a really great opportunity. You really don't have to be, like someone else said before, in a lab, in a lab coat with goggles on. Like that's not at all the only research experience that you need. I feel that my opportunities in the source project particularly helped kind of pave the way for more collaboration. Um, just in terms of uh, my project specifically, I worked in the Broome County Jail interviewing inmates and I tied that into my other major of psychology by talking about um, mental health resources in the Broome County Jail. And I think in both STEM and non-STEM research opportunities in Binghamton, there's a lot of need for collaboration because research, even when you're doing your own independent projects, depends upon other people's knowledge and information. So I think within my project specifically, the group that I did research with in the jail became a really great resource and everything. So just to tie that all together, if you are not into hard sciences, like I'm not, I can't do math, like um, that's still very much an opportunity and kind of looking for professors in whatever field you want to, if you, if you seek them out, they'll be there. Okay, well, thank you, Hannah, for that. Okay, Mr. Craig Broccoli, I know that folks have been uh, in the Q&A with you and Michaela and there's some questions that are just out there. Do um, you wanna start uh, maybe reading off a couple of those and we can see if our panelists will be nice enough to shed some light? Certainly, yeah. I mean, first off, I, I love the enthusiasm and, and the curiosity around research and discovering new knowledge. This is a good group. And I, I do wanna just touch on, I know there's been a lot of information shared, especially by you, Valerie, in the beginning, too, about the Undergraduate Research Center. But there's, there's a lot of questions around uh, the idea that if, if you're not part of FRI or First Year Research Immersion Program or the Source Project, which have a first year beginnings to it, how can you get involved in research, whether in that first year or beyond? You know, maybe can we get into some of the logistics again and, and talk a little bit about, does it mean you go to your faculty uh, your professor's office hours and ask them about their research. Is there ways to do that even prior to getting to Binghamton? Um, just some of the logistics there of getting involved in research, especially if you're not part of uh, a first year particular program. Yeah, I pr really appreciate that, that question. And um, like many of uh, the student presenters just kind of recounted their own beginnings. Um, you know, like Melina didn't come through the FRI, but as a first year, as a first term freshman, you know, connected with um, Professor Kirsten Pryor in ecology. Um, and I think it was a, a, sum, a prior summer scholar too that helped make the connection. I think I put you in touch with him, right, Melina? And then you, in, yeah. there happened to be an opening in the lab. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's serendipitous. I mean, many times it is. So, you know, a first step, as a first year student or second year, the first time you're getting involved in research at Binghamton is you really, you have to connect with the researchers. And so the first thing to understand as an entering college student is that your instructors are professors or graduate students, um, depending on you know, your class and your section and all, and they're active researchers. So you have to see your instructors as active researchers and know, and that those are your first line. Those are the people who who know you because they're you're in their class. Even if it's a big lecture hall, at least they know something about you, right? As as a student in your class, and going to office hours, meeting people, keeping keeping your eye open for events that are happening within the disciplines, the areas. There's always um, presentations and things going on. Network. So networking really. 
Um, and not in that, you know, we all have different kind of reactions to that word networking. Some can be like, oh my God, I hate networking. It's so scary. Other times it's really could just be as informal as a conversation, right? It's really about like meeting people and having a conversation and just finding common interests. And so you, you have to do that. You have to, that's, you know, we can help guide you. You could come and see us at the Undergraduate Research Center. We can help you. What's the right tone to set of in an email? What's the right length? of an email. What do you say in that email? You know, what do you say when you go to office hours? Like we can coach you in those conversations and, and we do that. Um, and then, you know, you, you make those connections. Um, we do, off, we, we also have, I should say, there's two more, uh, you know, I guess formal ways you could get research experiences. We have a database where we keep about a dozen or so opportunities. Some There's ongoing research projects. Some people, some professors will just put out an ad. So it's like, answering a job ad um, and sending in a resume and a cover letter. So those are also things that you should have prepared and we can help you with. The Fleischmann Center also helps with resumes and cover letters. But aside from that kind of personal conversation, the other route is a resume and a cover letter. You know, why I think about research as a, as a job. Um, I think it was uh, I think it was Brittany, you who said, I thought that was really good. Or you, you who said, it's like, yeah, you do a kind of informal informational interview you know the first time um, you're meeting a professor and talking about research and you're presenting yourself as someone who's a potential assistant really and valerie thank you for sharing that um, for the students especially with this generation because i i was in college as well in the 90s um, but the generations have changed and a lot of technologies out there now when folks are um, sending emails and and just communicating through like their phones. Um, you know, I feel like that spirit has been lost. We actually have to sit in front of someone and shake hands and do those kind of things and have those conversations. So you're also getting those skills as Valerie mentioned. Um, I think a lot of the students in this generation may need, not everyone, but some. What else out there, Craig? Anything else you have? I know Michaela has some, but I do want to okay. touch on a broader question that was very specific. I'll, I'll try to broaden it. There was a couple out there about like, how do I get involved in specific research with a specific department, which I think is great. And my first answer is you got to do your own research here and figure out what our faculty are doing research on. Um, I saw the one about engineering and, and it's a, one of our six colleges. So each college or school at Binghamton has a component of research within it. Um, as, as Byron noted, we're an R1 research institution, so we do a whole lot of research. Yes, at the graduate level, but particularly we, we involve our undergraduates, our undergraduates as much as possible on this research because we have so many bright minds coming in every year. Um, and the research tends to change and flow over time, but as a public institution, a lot of the research that we do is driven around bigger problems that we're dealing with in society. That's why public research institutions exist. You know, for example, engineering does a whole lot of research in, in smart energy and energy storage and energy generation. These are things we're dealing with in society now. Um, a lot of research in the healthcare side. And it's not just specific to one subject matter in engineering. And that's just one example of a school. So I would encourage you to dive deep. If you go on to each of our school's pages, you can click on faculty or their research call out. They might have a research tab but each of our faculty will have some of the research expertise listed. It just gives you an idea of some of the research here. We have a few centers of excellence on campus or areas that we have been denoted by much larger levels, state or federal levels of where Binghamton is an area of expertise, where we do research with other universities, whether on the East Coast, the West Coast, Central United States, there's a lot of collaborative projects that we might be spearheading. Um, but I just want to encourage you to do your research on that, um, uh, that you could dive deeper on any of our, our academic uh, web pages. So I'll pass it over if Michaela sees any that she wants to address. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Oh, we did get some great questions. Uh, the first one I see here is, even if I don't want to do a career in research, can I still participate in research programs? I know a couple of you hit on this a little bit of like, that's not really what you want to do for your career, but you still got a lot out of the program. Um, can a couple of you talk a little bit more about what are those things that you get, even if it's not what you want to do for a living? Yeah, Ben, you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah. Um, I have known for since before college that I wanted to do med school. Uh, that is something that I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that 
becoming an actually, and I didn't even know if I wanted to do research. Um, but once getting inviting, I thought it was too good of an opportunity to pass up. Um, but absolutely, I think research has been very valuable in aiding me in my career that's completely separate, well, somewhat separate from uh, research. Um, I think, again, the big things of just project and team management are just incredible skills to have. And again, kind of as you were saying, Barton, before about not having as much experience with just shaking the hand and having those formal face-to-face -face things. The, the, all of healthcare, and I, I, if you are pre-health, like all of healthcare is working in teams day-to-day -day with people face-to-face -face and with patients. And a big part of that is understanding how to track management of uh, projects. So whether that is the healthcare of one patient uh, throughout the day, or whether that's just working through with your team of RNs and OTs and PAs and whatnot. Um, I think those skills that you learn from doing research are absolutely uh, incredible. Awesome. And I mean, I got also with the fact, sorry, just like learning how to take in large depth of information. So I know a big part of medicine later is you have to stay up to date with the literature and what's going on in the world and what's new with drugs and what are they finding new in different diseases. And you're going to have to be able to read those different types of uh, papers while you are, when you are in your profession and you definitely learn how to do that and analyze that information while doing research. Very good. And also, I would say just for that in particular is that um, I initially didn't want to do research as well. I was that I wanted to go to medical school and become a surgeon, but just like trying it out and becoming a part of like a research group made me like absolutely love it. And that's now something I would like to pursue in doing like the MD slash PhD program. So like even though you feel like you might not want to pursue research now, it might be able to, it might change once you get absorbed into it and then you might see like, oh, I really love this. So yeah. Hi, thank you for sharing that because I do agree with what you said. And I think everyone alluded to this during this um, conversation. I feel like we're on a talk show. Uh, um, what, what, I'm, what I was saying is um, your taste will change. For students when they come here, depending on who you meet, what clubs you get involved in, what communities you live in, um, Valerie even talked about it, you know, um, some of her experiences, it's gonna change. So I, for the students who are out there just saying, oh wow, these students are fantastic. And I agree, these are great uh, panelists and folks that we have on here. Um, I, I've never really done research. I'm more MBA, um, aviation, that kind of thing. And I'm gonna research my refrigerator once this is over. Um, but literally, um, your taste will change as you go through this whole process. So I think just being open once you get to Binghamton, um, or if you're thinking about Binghamton, seeing how these folks are passionate about what they're talking about. I mean, they're not paid to be here on Sunday on this panel, having these discussions, they all volunteered. Um, so keep that in mind as we go through some of this. Uh, Craig, uh, Michaela, any other questions you have out there? And I'll do some last minute statements. There was one question, um, just I think it'd be helpful to get one or two people's input. Basically a question of how time consuming is research? And I'm guessing the answer is kind of going to be, it varies a lot depending on what project you're working on. But that was one of the big questions was how much time per week do you typically spend if you're getting involved with a research project? Yeah, go ahead, uh, M Melina. <laughs> Yeah, so it does definitely vary depending on your professor or how involved you are with research. Um, I'm sure that the FRI and Source Project students could speak more as to how time consuming those things are, but if you're not a part of those programs and you're doing an independent study like Brittany and Haya and I are, then it, it will depend. Um, usually for an independent study, it, it'll take about 12 hours of your week, um, which isn't too much. It's basically about the amount of time you would need for a class and you do get it for um, course credit. But you can also do research through paid opportunities. You can be paid as a work study, federal work study by your professor. Or if you just wanna get research experience, you can be a volunteer and then your hours are up to you. So say you're a double major and you are really busy, you have a lot of courses, you're stacked high with 18 credits and you, but you still wanna get research experience, you can do four to six hours in a lab a week. That's what I did my first semester when I was working with Dr. Pryor. I only did four hours because I, I had a busy schedule, but it's still enough. You still get to be a part of a project. So it really does depend on what you would like to do and what your professor expects from you. All right. 
Well, folks, that will conclude. I do want to remind you that in the chat on the side, we did put in the admissions hours. For those folks who want to reach out to admissions, we have chat hours. You can still call us. Um, the phones are being transferred to us individually. Um, certainly financial aid is still open as well. The university is still operating. It's just everyone's pretty much remote. Please make sure you look at some of those upcoming events with the undergraduate research office. I did post that in there. Um, certainly you heard a great deal from these students, these fabulous panelists that we have. And if you, if it even gave you an inkling to think more about this, make sure that you're tuning in with us. Um, ben, Kelly, Hannah, Melina, Brittany, Valerie, Miguel, Hyatt, and Lisa, thank you very much for helping us to kind of talk to these students that are in the process of making decisions and the ones who maybe are looking now to come to Binghamton or reach out to you for research now that they kind of have a better idea of what it is. Yeah, thank, thank you, Byron. I just want to say, you. I just want to say one thing because there's an open question I just wanted to answer live. Oh, please. So everyone can hear. Um, there's a question about if, if a participant at this, at this webinar can contact any one of us personally through our, our Binghamton emails. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that it's, you know, feel free to do so. I think it's okay with everyone if I see nodding heads around. Certainly, that's what we're all, we're all here. Um, so feel free to re reach out to us privately. Um, also, the urc at binghamton.edu is, is my general office email um, that we check every day as well. Is it okay if I put my uh, email in the chat? Sure. Anyone wants to put anything in there for, to reach out? Uh, for those attendees that are still here, um, our panelists were nice enough to share their emails. So if you would like to reach out to them on behalf of other information concerning research opportunities, um, you can reach us at admissions on the website or the information I gave you. Um, but we are here for you. So if you're struggling with decisions or you have more questions, this is the thing you should be doing, reaching out to the people who are here to help you. Okay. Everyone, thank you. Have a great afternoon and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Take care.